Now this Saturday we'll find out which building has won the 2012 RIBA Sterling Prize. I've been taking a look at the nominees of the UK's most prestigious architecture award. Cities can be instantly recognised by the standout buildings on their skylines. But this year's Sterling Prize shortlist reflects a change from pointlessly protruding architecture towards a more down-to-earth kind of building. Most of these wouldn't jump out at you if you were scanning the skyline, but that's exactly the point. This is an exciting return to a richer, more intelligent kind of architecture. Back on the shortlist is Sir David Chipperfield, this time with the Hepworth Museum in Wakefield, built as a tribute to the artist Barbara Hepworth. Eye-catching, yes, but it belongs in its surroundings. And Stanton Williams' Sainsbury Laboratory at Cambridge University, built to work in harmony with the botanic gardens cherished by the local community. There's a confident understatement here, a move away from shiny, glossy monoliths towards something you might call the anti-icon, architecture without bells and whistles, but with sensitivity and intelligence. And no one sums this up more than superstar architect Rem Coolhouse, ironically known for his dislike of ego-led design, with two buildings on the shortlist. The first, Maggie's Cancer Care Centre in Glasgow, a ring of interlocking rectangular spaces set in the grounds of Gart Naval Hospital. The next building on the shortlist is far from subtle. In fact, it's the most seen building this summer in the whole world, the Olympic Stadium. But with its recycled materials and designed to be part dismantled, it has less of an impact than previous stadiums. But enough of Olympic glory. The last building on the list is the one I'm most excited about. The Lyric Theatre in Belfast stands head and shoulders above the rest, just not literally, of course. This is the fourth Sterling Prize nomination for architects O'Donnell and Toomey. But these two don't do tricks. Their architecture is free from ostentatious overstatements. Their greatest efforts are put into the feel of the building. Oh, it's got an amazing smell. Doesn't it? It smells like sort of it's very woody. It feels like being inside a inside a cello, inside a violin case. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's um, that's quite intentional. But it is all handmade in timber, yeah, and it is all jointed together by craftsmen. But it feels very. It feels like a kind of warm cave. There's something sort of very cavernous about oh, it. That's a nice description. It's an impeccably made building, which trust me is really rare in the UK, and full of such deft touches and such complexity. You can look up there and look up there and look over there, so that every time you come back here, there's something new to explore. It's a, it's a very rich building. In fact, it's as close to perfection in a piece of architecture as you're likely to find. I've got absolutely no idea which building the Sterling Prize judges are going to plump for, but this one's definitely my winner. I reckon this is the year we see the end of that star architect show-off kind of building and not before time. Who knows how the recession's really going to affect architecture in the future. For now, let's enjoy what we might look back on as a bit of a golden age in architecture.